You're listening to Satellite Sisters. What's a satellite sister? The person you call when the best thing in your life happens or the worst. The person that gets you up, gets you going, and gets you through. And every once in a while, changes your mind. This podcast is part pep talk, part weekly check-in. Like grabbing coffee with a friend. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the Satellite Sisterhood. You're listening to Satellite Sisters. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Leon Dolan in Pasadena, California. I'm a writer and a mother and a, a mother. I never say that. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. Feeling <laughs> motherly. Good, Leon. Good work. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. Writer, mother. That's me. Jewel. <laughs> Okay, this is Julie Dolan. I'm in Dallas, Texas. Well, I'm a mother and a grandmother uh, and a podcaster. How about you, Liz? Well, I'm Liz Dolan. I'm in Santa Monica. I'm a podcaster. I'm a marketer. Uh, and I have a brief staff announcement, sisters, that I want to make. Um, actually, it's more of a Spotify staff announcement, but <laughs> it affects us. You know, our podcast, our hosting platform is called Megaphone. Listeners, that does not relate to you. This is the platform where we post our show, and then that platform sends it out to all of the platforms you listen on. Anyway, we did get a note the other day, sisters, uh, from Megaphone by Spotify saying for the week of October 31 through Friday, the 4th of November, Megaphone and Spotify will be closed for a company wellness week. Wow. So, so I, I read this and I thought, okay, well, that's nice. Like if you read that in the paper, that companies are starting to do that now for their employees' mental health. It seemed like a good idea in theory. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but in practice, I'm like, what are we supposed to do then if something goes wrong? Like they did say that some of the megaphone support team will be on, but there will be reduced resources. So it seems like one of those things that's great if you're an employee, but maybe not so much if you're a customer. Right? I don't know. <laughs> right. It just, well, and it coincides with Halloween. So they're obviously just having a giant Halloween party <laughs> for oh. a week, week long okay. Halloween. That party. probably it has nothing to do with wellness. They're going to wear <laughs> costumes and eat candy. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe it's a good thing that we're actually taking next week off. Yes. So uh, is it our wellness week or what are we going to call it? Do we have a special name? Jewel, what, do you have a special name for the week next week? I, I don't, Leon. I don't have a name. I, I, I was, I'm still, I'm still working on this week. So okay. that's the way okay. I roll. Yes. How about I you? Like, I feel like we should call it soup week. You know, we've been talking a lot about soup. So we're just satellite sisters soup week. Oh, Seems good. Good. Yeah. Or super week. Oh, but it's S O U P. Oh, Liz, oh, always the marketer always has to jazz it up a little, but I like that. I yeah, like that. Yeah. No, I would say it's a good thing we're taking next week off because nobody's working at megaphone. So <laughs> I know. And occasionally we have some issues. So yes, it is a good, it's a good thing. So they're taking a wellness week and we're taking a super week off. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're working today. We're working today. Julie, you're bringing a whole international news roundup. We haven't done some international news in a while. So uh, you're going to bring us that, right? Yes, indeed. We're going to talk about Russia, Iran. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, London and China. So that's pretty big. This okay. Week. And then Liz, you have a terrifying story about Amazon um, appliances in our home. <laughs> Every appliance is a spy, Liam. That's not just me saying that. That's the headline in the Washington Post. I, I must share. Okay. I'm going to report on what men, men are wearing. As they return to the office. I'm I'm on that. Don't worry. Uh, Liz, you have the story of Paul Newman's new book, which is pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. And of course, Julie, you have something you're calling a pumpkin pod. So that's good. <laughs> yes. As well, I, it's mainly a rant, a jack-o'-lantern rant. Okay. I'll get into it in a little while. Okay. But can we start by talking about how great last week was? Because Leanne Dolan was in the house. She was, Liz, she was in Dallas, Texas. That was great. It sounded came, like you guys were having a lot of fun. We did. Leanne came to Dallas to do some speaking events, two private events, two, to two different women's groups. And then we did a public event as well. And what I loved about having Leon in the house is, first of all, she arrives with magazines. Like the magazine <laughs> industry is going to go on your, but not on Leon Dolan's watch. Okay. Nope. No, no. Because she brought me some fresh magazines, Liz. Oh. So how good is that? Don't you like that? You know, Very Southern nice. Living, Real Simple. And I got a house gift. I don't know why. I didn't really deserve one, but she brought a gift. Okay. Of course, 
she arrived on time. We had all worked it out. But what I really liked about this is, you know, I mean, we work together every every week. We do a lot. And sometimes we just we just work and we don't always, uh, you know, and, and, and particularly in because you've been writing your book. Right. We haven't had a lot of time for conversation. I mean, uh, and and what I really liked about it was that we had time. We took some walks. We sat around. We got to talk and relax. And we had some great conversations, right? We did, Jill. No, it was fun. I mean, it was a whirlwind, but we jammed a lot in, which is our personalities, the two, the two of us like to be jam packed, but then we had some very relaxing moments and your house is very relaxing and your dog is very relaxed. Yes, that's Everyone's good. fairly relaxed at, at your, at your home. Yeah. Liz, we had a very nice sister lunch where Li- Leanne and I went out to lunch with my daughter-in-law Vera and her sister, Lena, who happened to be visiting. Oh, that's and so we funny. just we told that we told the waiter, we told the maitre d, we told everyone. <laughs> hey, we're all, you know, we're sisters, you know. We were pretty happy about that. At one point, Liz, you're not gonna believe this, but Leanne and I got so close, we actually shared some makeup, didn't oh, we? Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I forgot. Which is not something that Dolan right? sisters do. Yeah. No, I forgot oh. my foundation. I oh. had like every other piece of makeup, but a little bit of foundation. And Julie had some new foundation. So th- right. we did that. Unfortunately, we're both pale. So there you go. We just, we could share the same color. <laughs> that was good. But, but I, we, you know, mainly I wanted to tell you about the event that we did at Rise Restaurant, which is this lovely French restaurant in Dallas where Leon had a book signing. And what was great, Liz, is at, we got to meet Satellite Sisters in person. And I, you know, I, I, it's hard to express how meaningful it is when Satellite Sisters who listen to the show, we get to, we get to meet you in person. And we, I feel like I had such meaningful conversations, such close conversations with some satellite sisters. I already knew some new satellite sisters, but it was, it was just, it, it really warmed my heart. I don't know, Leon, what did you think? Oh yeah. It was amazing. I mean, first of all, people had driven like I five know, and six so hours to be there. Oh, I mean, that's so nice. Was, pe- People really drove a long way. There was a certain protocol at the restaurant where you had to sign up for a time slot and they stuck with the protocol. Uh, Just lovely. I had a chance to talk to everybody in the book line and then Julie was uh, entertaining in the bar area. So people would come and sign and maybe get another book or a new book or a book for friends. Uh, We'd have a chat, but I had to move the line along. But then Julie was handling sort of (laughs) the socializing in the bar area. But it, it, it does it does actually actually kind of choked me up to talk about it. It's just, as you know, some people have been listening to the show for 20 years. They've been to multiple events. You know, we feel like we have gotten to know them. Others were newer listeners or recent, uh, you know, recently relocated to Texas. You know, it was just, it, it is very meaningful uh, to see people in person, I think, in particular after the last three years. Yes. I mean, let's face it. Yes. So this just felt um, really lovely, it really felt lovely magic, and warm. Magical, yeah. Liz. And at one point, Point, it really was mind blowing for me because Liz at this event were some real friends from Dallas. Uh, uh-huh. You know, I my my book club, my tennis team, various other people, my old neighbors uh, came. Then there were satellite sisters, uh, some that we knew, some new ones. And at one point, Liz, our friends from Mansfield, Texas, who have come to many of our events, Satellite Sisters. Yes, Jana Becky. Yes, we're giving book suggestions to my book club friends. You see, they (laughs) crossed the Rubicon, Liz. Wow. They blasted through. It was like, and then there was a whole cluster of new Satellite Sister uh, friends that didn't really know each other. But then because they were all Satellite Sister friends, they all became friends. And Liz, it was just mind blowing that way. You know, it was just. (laughs) And, and Julie had set up a small dinner um, with uh, like, I have actual friends that live in Dallas, very old friends that live in Dallas. And uh, they came and stayed in a few people. But then the satellite sisters who had come, they met new satellite sisters and they all had their own dinners oh, there at okay. Rice it, Restaurant. It, it, like they, 
yeah, would just pair up or three or four people just get a table and have a glass of wine. And I, it was just really, uh, it was such a lovely place. I think too, because the restaurant is so spectacularly beautiful and the staff is so professional. We just had a wonderful time uh, working with the owner whose name is Hedda and then her beautiful staff, Lauren and Audrey and, uh, and uh, Summer who took all the photos. It was just, it was a seamless event. And then the food there it is a souffle based menu and that's why it's called rise i uh, it's the most delicious souffles you've ever had they're all impeccable with all kinds of wonderful salads and other side dishes so and it's a magical restaurant inside well lit it's like a store you feel like you're in a little oasis in france so yes. it, it was just a very special event Thank and you. we just want to thank everybody that came and and made the effort and was so sparkling like i think everyone was enjoying themselves don't you jewel absolutely absolutely now liz you as the marketer we did have we had a new concept because my husband came to the event. I think uh-huh. he was the only guy there, but yeah. um, I sort of said, and I, and I was so happy to introduce him to obviously my well, friends, new friends and my new friends, but half of them didn't believe that he was really my husband. So, <laughs> you know, like they the longtime listeners know that, you know, he's been accused of being a spy of some mm-hmm. sort. And perhaps that I had just rented this guy to show up at the event uh-huh. and that his um, identity could remain a secret. Uh, I'm not going to reveal that, but he, he enjoyed meeting all the satellite sisters as well. But Liz, I think there's an opportunity to do a satellite satellite sister premium see where we could have like you could meet family members of the oh <laughs> so people well, you've you heard about on the show but have never met yes yes oh, okay <laughs> think about that liz think about that but again we can't thank i mean we rise was great and everyone that came that was absolutely great and i think we all had a wonderful time we did. We did. And also uh, thanks to the other two groups that I met with the Lyceum group, which is an arts and culture group. And then Julie, the, the second group was PEO. Is that correct? PEO. And they're a phil- philanthropic organization, Leon. Okay. These are women that are supporting other women um, in uh, through education. They are, they are helping to sponsor um, girls education, which it's a terrific group. Yeah. So I was so happy to also meet another, you know, 60, 70 women through that. So a terrific trip in Dallas. Julie, thanks for hosting. You know, you did a lot. That's why you got the hostess gift. Uh, and, and it was just wonderful. It was wonderful. And I just want to remind people tomorrow I leave on an 11 day road trip. That is uh, a, a lot of work and a lot of fun. Uh, but I will be in Dayton, Ohio. This is it, Dayton. This is it, Ohio. It's maybe <laughs> first and last. Yeah. You know, you never, never know. say never. Definitely never the first. Never. Definitely the first. I, I just want to thank Debbie, uh, Satellite Sister Debbie, who's been so instrumental in helping to pull this off. So Saturday, we are going to be meeting from four to six at the Marriott at the University of Dayton. I think we are going to be outside at the, f- at the fire pit, but I will let people know. I want to Debbie already did some reconnaissance there at the hotel. We think we have a spot for the meetup, but I just want to confirm that we can all get in. Uh, so just uh, I will let everyone know who's coming, but I think we have about 10 people coming oh, to that. That's so I'm exciting. Looking forward to that. Yeah. So that is Saturday, Dayton, Ohio. And then the next week I'll be in Southport, Connecticut. And then I'll be in Long Island, East Meadow, Long Island. So all those events are at Lee and Dolan slash events. Would love to see people there. It's really fun. It's fun. Even if you don't know anybody, I guarantee you will end up talking to somebody at these events because that's the way Satellite Sisters and Misters are. Wow, you guys, there's just so much Satellite Sisterhood. I am yeah. loving mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. But I, it is a reminder that many of us are out moving around again. And so I have a tip for everyone because I was thinking about this and I thought, huh, my passport you know, I'm like, have I looked at that in the last three years? Is there it? Is there any reason why I need to check on that? 
And because you know how now the rule is, if you're doing any international travel, that your passport cannot be expiring in the next six months. So you can't wait until the last minute to do this, right? Right. And I started to think like some of the projects that I'm working on for next spring might require me to leave the United States. So sure enough, I opened up my passport it expires next spring. So I thought, okay, I got to get on this. And I went uh, to the website of the um, the U.S. State Department. There's a lot going on there at that website. But anyway, I found the passport application area. And lucky for me, or I'm thinking it was lucky for me, they are currently right now testing brand new online passport renewal. Which oh, I thought that would be super. That would be a lot easier. Yeah. Yes, yes, a lot easier because there's always, isn't there always something a little scary when you give your passport to someone to get like a visa or a renewal or something, or you're handing it to someone? I remember one time I had to get a visa to go to China. This was like way back, like 1989, and I had to leave it at the Chinese consulate. I'm like, okay, this does not really feel that great. <laughs> Right. <laughs> leaving my passport. That's it's some unusual consulate um, or even just renewing it, putting in the mail. So I decided I would try the online renewal because then I wouldn't have to give up my current passport. Right. Then they can go cook up my new passport. But meanwhile, I have my current passport. That was the thought anyway. So anyway, I did that. It was a little harder than I thought because first my photos were no good because I was wearing a white shirt. FYI, can't wear a white shirt against a white background. Everybody knows that, but I didn't, whatever. <laughs> and uh, and then they are just testing this online system. So it took about three tries for it to actually work. And finally, this weekend, I got the digital photo uploaded. I got all the information there. I pressed submit and uh, boom. Boom, it's in there. And I'm thinking, I am ingenious. I am ingenious because now I have my current passport, but they're off making my new passport. So I never have to have that feeling of what if I have to go somewhere right now and I and I don't have a passport. So I was feeling pretty good about myself until Monday morning when I got the email from the United States Department of State saying, yes, they got my application, blah, 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 blah. I'll get it in seven to 10 weeks, blah, 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 blah. Then the killer sentence, please note, we are immediately invalidating your most recent passport and you cannot use it for international travel while you wait for your new passport. Oh, they could have, they could have told you that online. That (laughs) might have been helpful. And you know, know, maybe they did, Julie. I can't say that that was a fine print somewhere. I did not see it anywhere because that's one of the reasons I was so excited about it. Anyway, I just wanted to tip people off. If you've been putting off... Uh, getting your passport renewed, or if you haven't even looked at your passport in years, because why would you need it? Now would be a good time. And you can also be part of the pilot program to get online renewal. So that's it. That's my job. And you're not leaving the country. And I obviously am not going anywhere for the next seven to 10 weeks. But let's be honest, I wasn't going anywhere anyway. It's not like I, yeah, yeah. It's a, that was not in my future, but now there's something weird about knowing, like, even if I wanted to leave the country, I couldn't. You can't. I You're know. stuck. You're stuck here in the U.S. Nope. Okay. Stuck well, here. good news, Liz, is that we've got Julie because she's got an international news roundup coming oh, up. You, you don't have to leave the country. Just okay. stay, stay put. Thank you, Liam. Most of you have probably heard us sing the praises of pros, the world's most personalized hair care. And for those of you that haven't, well, here we go. Right, Liz? We're here <laughs> to tell people about the incredible results yeah. using pros customized products. Well, you know, I love my pros. I get the shampoo and the conditioner. It's made for me because I fill out their questionnaire. And so everything I need comes right in those two bottles. And they each have my name on them. So that's good. But then, Leon, I noticed in the Satellite Sisters Facebook group last week, a listener posted this. New house has soft water. I have straight, fine straight hair. Bad combination. And she was looking for shampoo advice. Well, there's one word here. Pros. Pros, people. <laughs> you know what? 
I think I encountered that same situation at Julie's house last week because I had my hair done one day. It looked great. But then the next day I took a shower and my hair was flat as a pancake. I did not have my pros with me, Liz. I paid the price. So on this big road trip, I'm checking a bag pretty much so I can take pros with me <laughs> on the play, on the play. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. How does pros know what you need for your hair? Because they have these great in-depth hair quizzes. Okay. They analyze over 85 personal factors like hard water versus soft water. Pros can determine a unique blend of ingredients to treat your exact concerns. Pros also has a review and refine feature. So it lets you tweak the formula for any reason. If you have like a change of address, a hair color, your diet, changes. This is if maybe you don't like the first scent, get, give another scent to try. You can do that with the pros review and refine. And we like the fact that pros is a certified B Corp. It's an industry leader in clean and responsible beauty. All their ingredients are sustainably sourced, ethically gathered and cruelty free. They're also the first custom beauty brand to go carbon neutral. Uh, if you're not hundred percent pros is the best hair care you've ever had then they will take the products back, no questions asked. So let's get that soft water situation under control. Pros is, the he- Pros is the healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash sisters and pros is spelled P-R-O-S-E. Pros.com slash sisters for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. Thanks, pros. Julie, doesn't it seem like white sneakers are the new uniform for everyone? I mean, it's so easy now. You can be comfortable and style conscious every day with great looking sneakers. Have you noticed that in Dallas? Oh, Leanne, we are the style capital of the world here in Dallas. So we wear our (laughs) sneakers with jeans. We wear them with cute dresses. Come on, Leanne. You you know that. I know that, Jill. I know that. Well, Rothy's has amazing sneakers, including two new classic styles that are sustainably made with recycled single-use plastic bottles. That's right. We haven't talked about the plastic bottle situation in a while with Rothy's because we always are raving about the colors and the styles and how much we love them. People, they're made from plastic bottles, those single-use plastic bottles. They're just, they're crunching those up and they're putting them back in the sneakers. It's fantastic. So whether you like a luxe slip or a laid-back lace-up, you're going to feel so much comfort with each step and know that they are built to last. And you know how keeping white sneakers white is really a big deal? can be a challenge. It can be, be, Leanne, but not with Rothy's, right? Why, Jewel? Why? Tell the people. Because they're washable, Leanne. (laughs) That's right. And if you don't believe us, you can believe Self Magazine. I mean, that's a truism, isn't it, Julie? Yeah. Because yes. Rothy's is the original, Rothy's original slip on sneaker one, best slip on sneaker from Self Magazine in the 2022 Sneaker Awards. I, I didn't even know there were sneaker awards. It, it's a gala event, Leanne, but you know, everyone has sneakers on with their ball gowns. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's get sneaking around, sisters. Get stylish shoes that are versatile and durable enough to wear all the time with Rothy's. Get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash sisters. And Rothy's is spelled R-O-T-H-Y-S. That's rothys.com slash sisters for $20 off your first purchase. Thanks, Rothy's. You are listening to Satellite Sisters. We're back. I'm Leanne Dolan here with my sisters, Liz Dolan and Julie Dolan. And Liz, something scary in the Washington Post this week, I understand, (laughs) for spooky season. Spooky season. As if we don't have enough scary news, right? Right. Just like you think, oh my God. So yeah, I'm I'm a subscriber to the Washington Post. I was reading it the other day and here was the headline. Tour Amazon's dream home where every appliance is also a spy. I oh thought, my gosh, I thought, you know, sure. You see all of these stories about, you know, this person is this device is collecting data, this device is collecting data. But somehow when you see it all in one place, like, OK, here's your house and here's everything you could have in your house. And here's all the information that's being collected. And here's what they're doing with it. It is it is a little bit scary. And did you know, sisters, that two thirds of Americans who shop on Amazon own at least one of the smart gadgets? Do you know, do you guys have like an Echo or anything like that? 
No, no. definitely not for okay. that exact reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Julie, for somehow I knew you would not have any data no. collecting. Uh, we're, we're moving off the grid as soon as we can. Okay. <laughs> I have a bunker in my future, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to put, a, a, obviously, a link to this story in the show notes and in the Facebook group because it's really fascinating. So one thing, I mean, Ada, Amazon keeps selling. It doesn't sell our data, but there are also not that many restrictions on how it can be used. So things they say things that may be useless today could look different tomorrow if it got stolen or handed to a government anyway. Story is way too long for me to share all of the details. So I have organized all these Amazon devices in a scale from least creepy to most creepy. And I'm just going to quickly go through the least creepy so we can spend more time on the most creepy. Okay, so in the in the mildly creepy, least creepy area, I think we all know that your TV is watching you, right? It's collecting information like, okay, uh, yeah, it knows what you watch. Mm, is that harmless? We don't know. Um, next the ring doorbell. There's been a lot of complaints about the ring doorbell and uh, Amazon has handed footage to police without owner's permission at least 11 times this year. Is that a lot? I don't know. That's why I put it in the least creepy. Lee, and I know you're a Kindle person. So Kindle knows how fast you read. Do you care? Probably not, right? Eh, who cares? Uh, smart lights, smart switches, all of that. Mm, again, if they know when you put your shades up and down, I suppose somebody could put that together into some mm -hmm. sort of tale about you. This reporter said when he checked, you can download your own data information. And they had collected 600,000 data points from his home since 2019. That just feels bad, doesn't wow. it? Wow. I think that's bad. Data is control. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so again, in the vaguely creepy, but I'm not sure how much I should worry about it, you have your Echo Show. So because they can see another view inside your house, you have your Echo Auto. They know where you drive, when you drive, where your car is. There's that uh, Amazon garage door key. So not only do they know when you come and go, are they coming and going? Do we know that? We don't know that. Uh, the Echo frames, the glasses are more about if you're wearing them, other people don't know what they're being recorded. And then there's this one that I just put under the category of seriously, the smart soap dispenser. Like people, you have to draw the line somewhere. Nobody needs a smart soap <laughs> dispenser. Okay. So then, all right. So that's, those are the mildly creepy. Then let's get into the moderately creepy. Amazon recently, they're in the process of buying Roomba. Uh, you know, that seems, eh, are we supposed to worry about that? Well, because the camera identifies obstacles in the layout of the rooms and furniture, what it means is they will actually be able to create maps of your home yeah. created by the robots who clean them. Right. They and certainly could shame you into control because they know you don't use your Roomba enough exactly. and your house is filthy. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. another mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Their their data, Julie. They could they could just make judgments about mm -hmm. your cleaning and your mess. So there's that. Uh, also mildly creepy, the smart soap dispenser. Uh, or did I put that yeah. in the? Yeah, yeah you had that already. Okay, next one. This is mildly creepy because I don't understand who would really want this. The toilet with Alexa integration. So this is personalized settings for your toilet, including a preferred temperature and ambiance. Here's the creepy detail. You can flush it with your voice. I just don't think we should be doing that. That's not so much a fear of being spied on. Talking to your toilet, I don't know. I just, I yeah. just think. What is wrong with people? Exactly. I, mean I know. Really, there's nothing more intimate than what's happening in your bathroom. Right. So there's that. Yeah. So I would stay away from the toilet integration. Then this, I didn't even know existed. The Ring Always Home Cam Drone. This is a quadcopter with a camera that flies around the inside of your house to show you what's going on when you're not around. Are you kidding me? People are doing that. Don't do that. And well, even, if you're checking on pets or child you know, care. I, yeah. I understand the rationale, but again, this is a, another ring product, which means the police could ask for all that footage. People could hack in. There could be a lot of people looking about what's going on inside your home. So I don't know about that. Then there's the 
the echo speaker, which I thought, well, that seemed really harmless until this guy, again, that, so the echo collects audio recordings, you know, it's the always on microphone. So that seems like a bad idea, but it also detects coughs, barks, snores, and other sounds. So the good, good tip to people who have a, a sleep partner who snores and doesn't believe it, you can download the audio from your echo speaker <laughs> wow. and prove that wow. your sleeping partner snores. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and so this guy, he downloaded his Alexa voice history and he found that Echo had recorded many sensitive conversations after its microphone activated unintentionally. I don't know. I feel like we all kind of know that could happen, but eh, if it's easier. Okay. So that's, that seems seems very dangerous to me. That seems very, but I, I would put that in the high danger category, Liz. Okay. All right. Here's the one I put in the high danger category, the super creepy. This is the halo band. So this is the Amazon, like Fitbit, their version of the Fitbit. Oh, it goes beyond the Fitbit sisters because it includes body photos and voice recording and then it feeds it into amazon software for analysis so what they're trying to do is get like an artificial intelligence doctor going for you or at least or at least a life coach so i mean here's one thing oh my god so they will it will do it will do your bmi so for the for the BMI, all they ask you to do, sisters, is stand in front of your phone, stand in front of your phone's camera in your underwear for a 360 degree photo shoot. And then you send those shots to Amazon's cloud for analysis. And they come back, <laughs> tell you what your BMI is. Why would anyone want to do that? Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> but then the worst. Even you, I mean, who love you love gadgets, you I do love, love technology, technology, but yeah. you're drawing the line on that, Liz. Okay, but, good. Let's I'm say, close. Julie, this artificial intelligence thing, I mean, I know it's real, but I am I'm skeptical of a lot of the implications. So here's one last thing I'm going to say about this. So the Halo does voice tone analysis. So you train the device to recognize your voice by reading sample phrases, and then it listens constantly for any moments in your conversations that go beyond what they decide is a neutral tone. So for instance, you can get a report back that is plotting positive versus negative tone and high versus low energy, and then it applies descriptors to them. So the voice that registers as negative and low energy, you're going to get a report that might classify that as discouraged. Oh, you were discouraged today. I don't want, no, I, no, I do not need to device <laughs> tell me that. And then one last thing, part of that uh, AI, they discovered with their the clear gender bias because they anal- analyzed uh, weeks of tone data from a man and a woman. And the the terms diverged when they filtered for just the negative connotations. So the halo described the man's tone as sad, opinionated, stern, and the woman's tone as dismissive, stubborn, stern, and condescending. So now you have like a Fitbit that's uh, really bumming you out. (laughs) (laughs) Certainly being judgy. It's a judgy Fitbit, no doubt. And like you need more gender bias in your life. You need this. You're going to voluntarily strap this onto your wrist. So anyway, I rushed through them. You should read the article. It's very, it's illuminating. That's all I'll say. Very illuminating. Oh, wow. Liz, and doesn't, you know, um, doesn't Jeff Bezos own the Washington Post? Oh my God. I forgot to mention that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's oh. one of the reasons I love this story that the Washington Post did it, even though their owner is the owner of Amazon. So, <laughs> you know. What did they say? The the truth dies in darkness or something is there is their slogan? Dem- yes. <laughs> oh, Demo- Demo- democracy. democracy. Well, so does the truth about your BMI, apparently. <laughs> dies in darkness. Liz, I thought I was going to have the scary report because I was doing the international news roundup, but it seems like the, the real scary stuff is going on in your house. And that's just one that's just one brand. I mean, that doesn't include yeah. your phone, your your computer, and everything else, your car, everything else that's tracking you. Yeah. Whole thing is bad. Okay. Uh, 
Well, we are going to do an international news roundup. We're starting in Iran, where for the last two weeks of demonstrations, dozens of people have been killed. And these demonstrations were prompted because of Masha Amini, a 22-year-old girl who died in police custody. She was jailed for not wearing her headscarf. And Leanne, I was I thought of you when I he- first heard this story. And now as we watch these demonstrations where other women are removing their headscarves and trying to protest these rules. Yeah, it seems like such a simple gesture uh, to women outside of Iran. But um, I work on that International Women of Courage program with the U.S. Department of State. And two years ago, one of the women they picked was um, Sheree Bayat from Iran. She was an Iranian chess player, a world champion chess player from Iran. But when she competed outside of her native Iran, she wouldn't wear her headscarf. And uh, for that, she was... uh, jailed and then she ended up leaving the country uh because permanently because it was unsafe for her to be there she wouldn't apologize to the Taliban for not wearing the head or to the leaders in Iran excuse me for not wearing the headscarf so now she had to leave and she's in the UK as as a refugee but she had to leave behind her husband like that's how serious it is and um that's how that's how stunningly awful that government is uh, to to women there. And I think it's hard for people to remember, like Iran was the women of Iran were modern and they Super were in the modern. forefront yeah. and they were well educated. Mm-hmm. And it's only been in the last 25 years that this is all uh, clamped down and now they can't even you know go out in public and show their hair. So I just admire the women of Iran right now. Such bravery. That is so brave what they are doing. I mean, these demonstrations, I know people in the West are watching them were, you know, and you are struck with their bravery. But at the same time, this is, as you were saying, Leanne, this is a ruthless country. It's run by a dictator and their security police intelligence ministry is some of the some of the more ruthless in the world. Uh, So we're watching this descent. Um, but I remain very pessimistic that it will lead to some some new Arab Spring. Um, I am, you know, I feel like, you know, at least my assessment is that they, you know, that at some point the security p- police and intelligence ministry are really going to crack down on this. Uh, and these women are these women and other protesters are really brave. Over the weekend, there was a fire in a prison that houses political prisoners, journalists, foreigners. And in, you know, and the thought was that they they set fire to this prison because um, it, you know, maybe perhaps the security police did it so that uh, an uprising couldn't be organized because the organizers of such an uprising, you know, may, you know, were in this prison. The other part of this new conflict, so it is a new conflict of the women uprising against um, the, you know, the, this regime in Iran, but it's also an old con- uh, conflict because also at the same time, Iran is now shelling and sending uh, sending guns and weapons into Iraq, into the northern Kurdish region of Kurd- Kurdistan. Um, and they, the Iranians are trying to blame the Kurdish groups for fomenting the protests in Iran. So they're trying to, you know, uh, round up the uh, Kurdish uh, people that are living in Iran, and they have renewed their conflict um, with um, the uh, Kurdistan, the semi-autonomous region in Iraq. So that's an old conflict, and it seems like Iran is using this occasion to reassert itself against the Kurds as well. Uh, and can I say one more thing about this, Julie? I noticed a lot of video online this weekend of like 11 and 12 year old girls out demonstrating yeah. now. And yeah. I just have so much fear for them. I yes. mean, it's just, uh, it's a beautiful thing to see women leading a, um, a revolution of sorts. Um, but it's just, it makes me so fearful to see such young girls um, um, knowing how uh, how vicious the regime is. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. So, uh, so we continue to watch uh, and we continue to be amazed by the, um, all of the protesters in Iran. Um, I want to turn to Russia because um, certainly uh, with the Ukrainians taking back so much t- uh, territory and dis- disrupting the Russian supply chain, we've seen 
we've seen Putin um, go to sort of a new level where he is threatening uh, nuclear, you know, some kind of nuclear retalia- retaliation. And I think the likelihood of a Russians using uh, nukes is higher now than at any point since maybe even the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, but that doesn't mean that they will actually use it. But I really disagree with a lot of the commentators that I've heard online or read or seen on TV that say, oh, well, Russia would never do that. Putin would never use uh, nuclear weapons. I think we have to remember he has done, Putin has done everything he said he was going to do. We do, we doubted him when he went into Crimea. Crimea. A lot of people doubted that he would ever go into Ukraine. And now his, you know, he really is, you know, having he's running a losing water uh, war in Ukraine. And I am very fer- fearful and pessimistic that he, in fact, may, you know, may escalate this even more. That is terrifying. That, yeah. that, you know, I mean, obviously, regular listeners know that you lived in Moscow for five years. And so um, you have seen a lot of Putin's behavior up close and personal. Yeah. But that is really terrifying, Julie. You know, we were this uh, last week when Lynn was visiting, we were having a good conversation with um, my daughter-in-law, Vera, and her sister, Lena. They grew up in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan, and uh, they were saying that Bishkek, it, which is the capital of Kyr- Kyrgyzstan, is now overrun with Russian men that have tried to escape Russia and to escape the draft because they do not want to fight in Ukraine. Um, but it has created... Um, really a situation there um, because there are, you know, they don't have the housing. There's no, you know, you can't get a hotel room. Um, these men are in in the capital, but they don't have a job. They don't have any way to support or feed themselves. So that is a, you know, a new situation that we're watching as well. Wow. That's, yeah. and and their parents live there, right? So yes. they're getting so, firsthand reports of what yes. it's like in Bishkek. Yeah, so firsthand. I know this that was reported in the New York Times, but that's Elena was talking about it because she wants to go visit her parents uh at Christmas time and she's you know very she's she's worried about that trip, uh about going at that particular at that moment because of what's happening in Russia and in uh, uh Bishkek. Um, China. Can we talk about China? I mean, there was a lot coming out of um, the big conference with Xi. But what one of the things that struck me is that they have doubled down on their zero COVID policy. Did you see that? No. Yeah, I don't understand what the end game is here, Julie. Do you like at a I don't point? Isn't COVID coming to China? I just I just don't know how you say that. You know, we're just make going to make sure it never happens here. Yeah, I don't I don't know, Liz, because the Chinese vaccines have proven to be less effective. Uh, They have they are, you know, China has done mass testing, mass lockdown. But but as we all know by now that it is uh, COVID is a highly contagious, easily transmitted virus. There are new variants all the time. Um, So I, I don't know how China is going to continue to do this or why they would continue to do it. Mm-hmm. So, but it, that, that is their official policy. So it means that, you, you know, we're likely to see more mass testing, more mass lockdowns, and uh, it's very difficult to visit China as well because of this. Okay, well, I can't leave the country anyway. So <laughs> I, am, I am not allowed right. right now. I think You're I right. do neither Bishkek nor Beijing. So <laughs> okay. I'm feel, You're feeling also. pretty safe right now, except for the echo in my kitchen. <laughs> well, and finally, uh, yeah, in Great Britain last week, uh, protesters, climate protesters for Just Stop Oil attacked Van Gogh's sunflower painting. Did you see this, Leanne, at the National Gallery? In no, London? I was busy with you. I didn't okay. even see this. <laughs> oh, yes. So they attacked it and then they glued themselves uh, to the wall in the museum. Oh. Um, so Liz, you remember she, our sister Sheila, when she was doing the show regularly, she, um, she had a, a term called the stunt meter, you know, yeah, where, yes. where when she saw a news story or she saw, you know, someone making a declaration, she would analyze it as to whether or not it was true or a stunt. Mm-hmm. And 
I, I have to I would have to say that I, I suspect that our sister Sheila would say this is pretty high on the stunt meter. These protesters, first of all, it's not original. OK, like if you want to you know capture the attention of the world, if you want to make a really strong statement, at least think up something that's original. I mean, we've already <laughs> we've already have activists that have attacked works of art in other cities. So that's not that good. OK, then secondly, you know, the 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 protesters were interviewed and they said they deliberately chose the Van Gogh sunflower painting because they knew it had some kind of glaze or glass protection on it. So when they threw the soup on the on the painting, they knew that they weren't really um, damaging the painting. Mm-hmm. They only damaged the frame. Well, Again. I, but I liked that. I think it was designed to be a stunt, which I'm I'm fine with that. I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't, Liz, because, you know, there are a lot of people that want to come to the museum and see that painting. They just, you know, they had their passports. They took a big trip trip to London. They wanted to go to the National Gallery and they wanted to see Van Gogh's sunflower painting. OK, <laughs> so that was a stunt. OK, then gluing yourself to the wall, that doesn't work because they they got them unglued. So I, I don't know about that. It just I feel keep- like I feel like they wanted to attract attention to an issue. But in the process, not damage a fine work of art. And that's what they pulled off. Successful stunt. No, I, I think not, Liz. I think uh, I think we're just tired of that. I think it would have been much better if they really want to improve the climate. They can volunteer to clean up. They can do recycling. They can work to build bike lanes, whatever. OK, but uh, I mean, this <laughs> okay, that well, that would be much like more work. <laughs> yeah. OK, I'm sorry. Did you say they threw soup? I just yes. I didn't realize. Wow. Well, we have just so much soup news in this show, Julie. I didn't know that's <laughs> see they that was really the the super week kickoff, Liam. Okay. We had an interview. Oh, you had hired them? Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> that's that. That's okay. my take on those. And we're and we're wrapping it up on soup. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, Julie. That was a good job. Complete. I'm glad we got a chance to talk about the women of Iran, too. Um, All right. I had just briefly a story from The New York Times about what men are wearing back to the office. And the first thing that caught my eye about this story was, first, it's very funny and very cheeky uh, the way it's written. But second, have you seen the acronym RTO? That was new to me. Return to office. Okay, so remember at the beginning of the pandemic, we all figured out that WFH was work from home, Uh right? We started to see, to get like promotional things about, oh, Banana Republic, your W, you know, F H outfit. Well, we're going to be seeing a lot of RTOs as people are returning to office. So I pass that along for you in your jargon, uh, your jargon meter. You can go ahead and use that. Um, So here's the bottom line, because my husband was going to New York for his first work trip, right? He hasn't been in three years, a manager's meeting. He is one of the few people during the pandemic that put on a suit every single day and went to a completely empty office to do his job. Okay, He had about three weeks of wearing blue jeans. And then he said, I can't focus if I'm in blue jeans, put his suit back on and went to the office. Well, you know what people are, they, they actually surveyed finance bros as they call them in New York. And yes, they are all putting on their suits and going back to the office. Now, it's kind of a relaxed suit. They're looking at normal suits, right? But they've shrunk all the suits, right? Have you seen that? All the tiny suits on brown. The tiny short yeah. suits, you know, they're all, they look so uncomfortable. Men look uncomfortable now, but I welcome to our world, men. We've been uncomfortable for generations. So, <laughs> Lee and I, I couldn't tell had they shrunk the suits or did everyone just put on enough weight during the pandemic? So they looked crowded into their suits. <laughs> They shrunk the suits because their suits are even shorter. Like, where's the flood, boys? I mean, a lot of really. I like, sh- I like to see the ankles. I think it's cool. All yeah. right. Oh, Julie. Okay. okay. What turns Julie on? Ankles. Um, so uh, they shrunk uh, the suits. But don't worry, you don't have to wear a tie unless you have a client meeting. And oh, it's basically sure. a dark suit and a white shirt, a crisp, white, tightly fitting shirt and then you wear the suit jacket and that's what you wear you're going to look totally fine you have a client you slap on a tie that useless piece of of uh you know it shows how stupid it is right yeah (laughs) like like, what does a tie uh, yeah it's so silly 
<laughs> now, the only the particularly interesting thing in this article, though, is that's for like 99 percent of the of the finance pros that have gone back to work. Now, the top one percent, the real senior executives, they get to keep the loose fitting pants, the cashmere blazer and all birds. That's oh. what they're wearing to the office. <laughs> so that's how they've distinguished themselves. You know, it's like, we're still better than you. Look, we don't even have to wear real shoes. So that's good to know. <laughs> if you're going back to an office, if you're RTOing, forget the tie, shrink the suit. Okay. But the hierarchy is still there. Yeah, exactly. Julie, go ahead. Judge me. Okay. When I came you know off, I do, sister. You know I do. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> All day, Liam. <laughs> I mean, when I came off that plane at DFW last week, what did you think of my luggage? Okay. Judge my luggage. What did okay, you think of that Leanne, beautiful base okay. bag? I, I admit it. I was a little bit jealous because you came rolling through those security doors and there it was, this super stylish <laughs> obviously easy to wheel a uh, new base suitcase. I was jealous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? As soon as that code came out, I went and ordered myself a new roller bag. I needed one. It had been so long since I'd traveled and my other one had just given up the ghost. So I used our code, went over to base and got myself one of their very chic little roller bags, just sticks, boom, right into the overhead. No problem. I can't even tell you how many fantastic pockets there are inside. Uh -huh. You know, we love compression. Yes. You know, we, love it. we love things to be compressed down. And in the base bag, you've got pockets. You even got a pocket for a wet bathing suit. How smart is that to separate it from your other luggage? Smart, you smart, can just smart. squeeze things down, squeeze them in, pack them in. I mean, I had plenty of room in that bag for, you know, three days worth of outfits and events in Dallas. Absolutely no problem. And I felt pretty great rolling through TSA with that thing. I have to say, I look great. So if you need a new bag this holiday season, if travel is in your future, do yourself a favor and head on over to BASE. BASE was created by actress Shay Mitchell. Oh. You know, you love her. Just look her up. <laughs> She was a pretty little liars. And she wanted to make sleek and affordable bags, luggage, and accessories designed to help you travel effortlessly while still looking fashionable. And I would say mission accomplished Shay Mitchell. So right now, BASE is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash sisters. Now I'm going to spell BASE for you. It's B-E-I-S basetravel.com slash sisters for 15% off your first purchase. These bags would make great holiday gifts too for all the travelers in your life. Basetravel.com slash sisters and base is B-E-I-S travel.com slash sisters. Thanks, base. Framebridge makes it easier than ever to custom frame everything that matters without ever leaving the house, which means you can easily give a thoughtful gift this holiday season. Now, Liz, you gave a gift to yourself this season, <laughs> didn't you? You've just gotten a bunch of Framebridge stuff framed up, right? Yeah, we well, can just call that self-care, Liam. Self-care okay. with Framebridge. Yes, the last time we talked about Framebridge, I said that I was sending off two posters that have been sitting in my home unframed forever. And they send you the packaging, you put them in the in the cardboard packages, you send them back. And then I asked them to suggest designs to me. I had never done this before. Oh, Liz. It was so much fun, Lee. And so then, like, not very long later, I don't know, a week, not long at all, I got an email, boom, I opened it up, boom, four different potential framing and matting combinations. I mean, things that I would never, let's admit it, I would never bother to do that myself, and I probably wouldn't be that good at it. So it, it was really... <laughs> It was super fun to have a frame bridge designer say, okay, here are four choices, Liz. What do you think? Or if there's anything else we can do for you, just let me know. So I picked one that was really on the money. And now my two pieces are being framed and any day now I'll have them back. It could not have been easier and more fun. Now, this is like an ongoing frame bridge story arc. We first, we got the... <laughs> Yes. You mailed them off. Now you've chosen the frames. Uh -huh. I can't wait for the next Framebridge sponsored ad so that we can hear about how the pieces look. Yeah. It will be the unboxing, Lee, and I'll do an unboxing. 
Excellent. All right. The great thing about Framebridge, you heard Liz, they can custom frame your item and deliver your finished piece right to your door. And instead of paying hundreds at a framing store, Framebridge starts at just $39 plus free shipping. Order online or stop by a Framebridge store near you to work with a designer in person. Get started today. Frame your photos or your posters or whatever you have hanging around and make it the perfect gift. Go to framebridge.com and place your order today. Go to Framebridge. Dot com and place your order today. Thanks, Framebridge. We are back and the subject is soup. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, as we mentioned, um, we're off next week, but do not, do not give up hope of seeing your satellite sisters. I am doing a cooking with Liz live on Saturday, October 30th at noon pacific time on the satellite sisters youtube channel so if you're not subscribed there you should go do that super easy to find just go to youtube and type in satellite sisters and you just subscribe and i'm going to be making soup now i have not picked the soup yet we've had this running thing about what is the best fall soup i voted for butternut squash soup and i there was i was the victim of some soup shaming here on the show (laughs) in the facebook group Uh so i'm going to pick whatever soup i want to make let's just be clear about that i get (laughs) i get to pick and it might very well be butternut soup but if you have soup suggestions for me that you want me to consider those you should be posting in the satellite sisters facebook group there is a thread there's a soup soup thread there uh so go ahead and add your suggestions there but one other thing one other special event i'm going to mention that might be happening live somewhere while we are off on our break is that every time i talk to people about soup leon was the first to tip me off but now everyone has said this apparently i need an immersion blender oh yeah uh, Julie, do you have an immersion uh, blender? Yes, you need that for creamy soups. Yes. Okay. Well, who knew? Who knew? I didn't. <laughs> Cooking with Liz did not know. That is not in like in the pantry any place. So, um, so yeah. So I'm on the hunt. You know, getting crate and barrel on the blower for an immersion blender. So I may be doing a live unboxing of my immersion blender. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so wow. I, Don't I miss that. Yes. You know, I know, you know, we're taking time off, but we're not going to leave you alone. There are things happening here that we will be sharing with you. So you can watch that will potentially be in the Satellite Sisters Facebook group. Anyway, more coming on soup, of course. The, there's many more days left in October. Okay, that's so good. Well, Liz, in Southern Living Magazine, the magazine that Leanne gifted oh to me. Leanne, why did you get Southern Living Magazine? It's I don't know. Magazine. It's a bit it's I, I, Don't mock it. Do not mock it. It's a wonderful magazine, and they have wonderful recipes, and they have a creamy pumpkin soup, Liz, in that magazine recipe. So you, you, I want you to get that. I want you to buy the magazine. Okay. No. Okay. All right. (laughs) Okay. You need to. All right. Well, speaking of pumpkins, uh, wire cutter, you know, that's the segment of the New York times where they, they, um, they have a crew of, of, of certainly of young people. That's what, that's what I'm thinking that if you, you know, they analyze things and provide findings about what are the best towels, what are the best sheets, uh, what what's are the best uh, immersion blenders, you immersion know, blenders, you may want, want to go yeah. there. Okay. But I had to take, um, I had to just really, I, I don't know. They, I, they, I, they upset me this week because wire cutter, you know, independently reviews products, but they decided that they had, they did an article about the jack-o'-lantern, the Halloween pumpkin and how to make your car, you know, your jack-o'-lantern the best ever. And you know what they said you should do? Do not, well, they had many steps, which included uh, bathing the pumpkin, uh, storing the pumpkin in your fridge, but they said you should not cut a hole in the top of the pumpkin. You should not Um, with the stem. Okay. They said that was wrong. They said the stem is crucial to preserve the structure of the pumpkin. They suggest that you cut the hole in the bottom of the pumpkin. 
Okay. Oh, that's a big idea. <laughs> no, I think it's a terrible idea, Leah. Okay, I think it's a terrible idea. The jack o' lantern. I mean, first of all, parent, you know how my feeling about Halloween. How adults have co-opted the children's um, uh, holiday. Okay, we're okay. ruining it. Ruining it. Uh, they're ruining it. Okay, but let's not ru- ruin the ritual of carving a pumpkin. Even Martha Stewart does not. I looked at Martha Stewart. She she has you cutting the top. Um, so, you know, and then you scrape it out. It's a whole ritual. Everyone does it. You make your nice pumpkins. It's great. Okay, they they want you not to do that. They want you to carve it in the bottom. But I don't know how you're going to put the candle in the pumpkin, Okay. Mm-hmm. If the top, if you can't take the top off, because you're going to burn your pumpkin up, aren't you? No, I think think you put the bottom down, put the candle on, and essentially you put the pumpkin on top of the candle as opposed to- Yes, I know. But but then the flame is close to the top and it doesn't have any place to escape. Okay? You it see seems that? like that's the kind Dynamic. of wire cutter would have tested, Julie. Yeah. But, well, in the comments, they said they didn't really test their pumpkins with any candles in it. Uh-huh. 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 Okay. Well, no, then that's right. idiotic. That's you are right. You're right, Julie. Is that what you wanted? You're right, Julie. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. We're done. Okay. We're done. We can move on now. Okay. Smart. Smarter than the New York Times. Thank you very much. <laughs> good, good, okay. Good, good. All right. Wire cutter is wrong. Julie is right. That, that yes. it, it's settled. Okay. It is time for entertaining sisters. And I have some news about a book. And I was fascinated to to read this over the last week, because here's the deal. There were all of these announcements in the last week that there's a new memoir coming out by Paul Newman (laughs) or about Paul Newman. I don't even know how you say that. You would think if it's a memoir, it kind of needs to be by Paul Newman. And I thought, but, but Paul Newman died a really long time ago. How is it how is it that a memoir by Paul Newman could just be coming out? Like, what is the story of the book? And the story is literally a plot twist from a Leon Dolan novel. I can't even, <laughs> I cannot even explain to you how thrilled I was to hear like how it took so long for this book to come out. So apparently Paul Newman died, what did I say? 2008, I think is when he died. But before that, he had been, he knew he should probably have some kind of self-history, but he didn't really want to write it himself. So he spent five years being interviewed with a close friend, by a close friend, Stuart Stern, who was a screenwriter, wrote Rebel Without a Cause, and he was a close friend of his. So they did a whole series of interviews together. Uh, So then he had audio recordings and transcripts. But then Paul Newman died in 2008. Before he died, allegedly, he burned all of the audio tapes. You oh know. my gosh, that is a plot point in my book. Yes, yes, Leon. So this that was the detail that was in the Wall Street Journal that was not in many of the other accounts that I read. Uh, he burned most of the audio tapes, but they knew, the family knew the transcripts had probably survived, but they just did not know where. So he has, guess what? Five daughters. And the five daughters spent a long time looking for the transcripts. And his Hmm. daughter, Clea Newman Soderland, uh, who wrote the afterword to the book, said, we just knew that at some point we were all going to find them. Anyway, it turns out, where did they find them? Well, we may have mentioned this on Satellite Sisters before. We grew up in the town next to Westport, Connecticut, and Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward lived in Westport, Connecticut. So the best thing you could do if you left the house and went to Westport, which was so much cooler than Fairfield, so that's where we went, (laughs) is to have an actual sighting of Paul Newman, right, sisters? Like, yes, yes, that was very thrilling. We saw him in the bookstores, at the yes. meat market, at the yes. you know, various places. Yes. yes. So they lived in Westport, and everybody knew it. So one of his daughters was explaining to the New York Times that they they just referred to this as their hippie home. That Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward bought this hippie home in Westport. 60 years ago, and that it was just stuffed from top to bottom with mementos from their lives. Photos of, you know, Paul Newman with Frank Sinatra and Louis Armstrong, pictures of Joanne Woodward washing the dogs in the kitchen sink, all of that. And so they had, they had looked, you know, one of the daughters has since bought that house and they kind of looked top to bottom there for the transcripts, nothing. 
But on the other side of the Aspetec River, which we are familiar with, runs through Westport, they had another family dwelling that was a wood paneled barn. And over there, so other people, you know, stayed over there and a footbridge connected the two homes. And the, the daughter said there was a tree house there. And that's where Joanne Woodward used to go to hide from all from everyone all the time. Anyway, and so in the barn, there's a laundry room and a family friend and filmmaker, a producer whose name is Emily Wachtel. She, I guess, was staying there and just searching through things. She found a locked cabinet containing these stir, transcripts of these stern interviews with Newman and with, with his colleagues and confidants. That's and a so, find. Yes, Julie, she busted open the storage unit. So she must've been a very, very close family friend. And there were 5,000 pages of transcripts of this in a box that was just labeled P N history. And the family had never read any of it. So oh, that, wow. That gives me chills. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I mean, and if you haven't read my book, The Sweeney Sisters, very, very, very similar plot line. Yes. Concerning in the, in the like paper. the same town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Concer- I think I probably even have a Paul Newman mentioned in that book. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Incredible. Yeah. So they hired an editor or, you know, they have an editor who kind of put this all together. And that's what the book is. So it is kind of reorganized transcripts of Paul Newman talking about himself, but also some of his friends and family, including Joanne Woodward, talking about him. And so just I think the backstory is fascinating. Now, the daughters have all commented that their father was so much more insecure reading all of these transcripts than they ever imagined, and that they got introduced to a whole different Paul Newman than they ever knew. And of course, we knew him as the most attractive man in the world, right? (laughs) The the gorgeous movie star and the race car driver and the spaghetti sauce. uh, Salad salad dressing man. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Anyway, there's a lot more to Paul Newman history. And they found it like in a box that had been long since lost. Cool story, huh? Yes, Liz. Very dramatic retelling for us. Yeah, too. I, I'm really interested in this. I will have to I'll have to read these stories. And uh, now that I'm planning on doing some listening and reading on the road, I would love to read that. That's just amazing. I can't wait. Oh, that'll be cool. Don't you think maybe he never intended to publish this? I mean, perhaps. there's all that, too. Right. right? So, right. Anyway. Well, we don't know. We don't, we don't know. He might have left instructions with somebody. You know, maybe he he also thinking like a novelist. Maybe that's why he didn't burn them and destroy them. He mm-hmm. left them there for someone to find. Mm-hmm. That's the family's official position. Yeah, I can see that. That's mm-hmm. how I would have written the story. Oh, wait, that's how I did read the story. <laughs> exactly see? how I wrote my story. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, the Sweeney sisters available everywhere. Um, all right. You know, speaking of available everywhere, Julie, Liz exciting times. The Hallmark countdown to Christmas starts this week. Yep. It's October, but it doesn't matter. It does. Hallmark is they are plunging ahead. Okay. 40 different movies, 40 original movies, 39 of which are about Christmas. One about Hanukkah. There you go, people. One about Hanukkah. Uh, And uh, starring some of your favorites, you know, you're going to see Holly Robinson, Pete. That's great. You're going to see Joni Sweeten. That's great. I see Mary Lou Henner. She's often in those movies. That's great. But then some new faces, some fresh faces, some new storylines, including one that's starring an LGBTQ couple. So that's a first for the network. So great. They are moving forward into the future uh, with this countdown to Christmas. And Julie and Liz, I picked out one movie each for you oh, guys, okay. that I think you're going to enjoy. Okay, Julie, uh, this seems to have your name all over it. Okay. The Royal Nanny here. <laughs> okay. 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 It stars uh, Rachel and Dan. You don't know them, but then Greta Sachi. Remember Greta Sachi? She's in a, yes. okay. And yes. here, here's, here's the log line. Claire is an MI5 agent who goes undercover as a Royal Nanny. She must overcome the challenges of her assignment, like resisting the charms of Prince Colin while keeping the family safe at Christmas. Oh, oh my God. I love it, Leanne. All the elements are there for me. Royalty, espionage. Sounds excellent. Exactly. Well, I 
believe there are some corgis in that one too, Julie. Oh, so that's good. so that's on uh, circle your calendar, November twelfth. That's on November twelfth. And then Liz, this one is for you. I mean, I it's like they made the movie about your life, Liz. Okay. Well, not oh, really. Yes. It's it's called Our Italian Christmas Memories. So stick with me. It stars Sarah Power and Bo Bridges. Okay. Uh, and here's the description. The Colucci siblings, in an effort to jog the memory of their grandfather, who was struggling with dementia, set out to recreate their late grandmother's legendary pasta sauce. <laughs> Wow. Cooking with Liz. Cooking here. with Liz. Peace and sauce. Liz, right it's there. like Mama Capra's sauce yes. in a movie. <laughs> sort it's of a scary. Scary. Too, she may be in it too, Liz. Who knows? <laughs> okay. All right. So there you go. That, those are just two that I picked out, but there are 40 of them. So uh, I'm actually later on in November, I'm taking a Hallmark holiday movie writing class. It's a three-day online seminar to write a Hallmark holiday movie with one of the executives from Hallmark and then two writers who have produced a bunch of uh, Hallmark holiday movies. So it's all about structure and everything. So I'm going to be really watching the movies this year. I just thought it'd be fun to take a crack at one. So what the heck? I'm so good at that, Leah. I signed up for I signed up for the online class. And so I'm really going to be watching these, but there you go. Get, get ready. People starts this week. Um, okay. That's it. It was a long show. We yeah. have to, I have to go to Dayton. I don't know about you guys. So we got to get going. Uh, <laughs> A big thanks to uh, Sergio Enriquez for engineering our show. He had special help today from his beautiful daughter, Andrea, who helped do the sound check. Uh, I think she knows some new words because she said nice and yes. So that's great. <laughs> we sound good. That's what she said. Uh, uh, we also like to thank Emily Loudermilk, who does the uh, graphics for our show. They're always so funny and so fresh. They make us laugh every week when they come in. If you want to see Emily's um, work, you can s- follow us on on Instagram at Sat Sisters or subscribe to Pep Talk. I am putting one out this week, people. I swear, uh, it's going to be super. There's just a oh, uh-huh. little hint, little hint, uh-huh. super. super. Uh, okay. <laughs> A big thanks to our advertisers who support Satellite Sisters. It is really how we are we are able to do the show. So thanks to the advertisers who support us. And thanks to you, the listeners who support the advertisers. It all makes it possible for us to do the show. All right. Who's got a to-do list? Jewel, what do you have? Well, this weekend, my college girlfriends, a.k.a. the aging models, are gathering for our annual weekend. Um, But the packing list for the weekend said to bring a bathing suit. Mm. So uh, all I can say is before the suits come on, it better be dark. Okay. (laughs) You're all going to look great. Yeah. You're you're the aging models. You you just got to stand up to it. Where where are you gathering? Is it at someone's home? Yes. In Annapolis. Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. Well, my to-do list, Leanne, is um, taking Hooper to the vet. I realized he hadn't had his shots in a while. And then when I called them and tried to make an appointment for that, they're like, yeah, well, you haven't been here since 2019. So what vet has been seeing him since then? I mean, they said they said it in a nice way. And I'm like, well, <laughs> nobody. I And I realized dogs are just like people. They haven't been going to the doctor either. Right. I think that's really true, Liz. They yes. have been missing all of their appointments too. So we have sort of a, a wellness visit uh, for Hooper this week at the vet. So um, that's my number one task. Okay. All right. Well, my to-do list is just enjoy. I mean, I'm setting off on this 11 day road trip. It's planes, trains, automobiles, ferries, rental cars. I've got to be teaching at the Irma Bombeck Writers Workshop. I'm going to be speaking in Southport and Long Island, but in between, I'm going to be seeing a lot of family and friends and just trying to enjoy every, every piece of it. It feels like it's been a while since I've been able to do that without a lot of work uh, hanging over my head. So I'm looking forward to my trip and seeing satellite sisters along the way so there you go just enjoy is my my word for this week all right sisters have a great week you too safe travels leon thank you and don't forget call your satellite sister